Welcome to our session two of our first workshop on mediation and moderation. This session is about mediation, and this is the agenda for today. So we'll introduce you to SPSS. We'll guide you through this process from clicking on the SPSS icon to uploading your data so now you can run your models. And once we, are, we get there, then we will run a mediation model. Uh, it's really important for you to know that this is a hands-on workshop, and if you have your own data set, you can definitely use your data set. You can definitely use your variables because the processes will be the same. But to make things easier for you, if you don't have a data set, you can go to the description of this video and download the data that we at the Bread Lab put together for you. There will be a few variables there. I will guide you through uh, all this process and uh, I tell you which variables we should use when conducting this analysis. But yes, if you have your own data set, feel free to use that. But if you don't have a data set, use ours. We uh, are trying to make this as user-friendly, as easy for you as possible. So let's just start with an overview of mediation. What is mediation? Remember, when we are running mediation models, we are interested in the mechanism or the process through which our independent variable influences our dependent variable. How? How our independent variable influences our dependent variable. Uh, usually, you see this figure in papers that describe mediation models. You have three different paths, path A, path B, and path C. Uh, but the bottom line here is that we are looking at the mechanism, how independent variable influences the dependent variable. That is the mediator. So once you have SPSS on your computer and you click uh, on the icon, this is the screen that you see. Just click on OK to proceed, and then you go to File. Okay. So by clicking on File, there are a bunch of options here. And uh, the one that we want now is actually open, and we are open your data set. We are not open the, a project or a syntax or an output. We are open your data set. So if you decided to download our own data set that we are sharing with you, find where that data set is uh, saved on your computer, and then double click on that. Okay? So this data set, the name of the data set that we are providing you is called First Workshop. Once you double click on this file, uh, you'll get to this screen. There will be uh, a number of variables, meaningfulness, engagement, commitment, organization identification, task complexity, and performance. Uh, keep in mind to use or to create simple names for your variables, short names for your variables. Uh, it's important to keep them to eight eight characters. That's the magical number. Um, we'll be using the process macro developed by Hayes, and that process, that macro, has this limitation. We can only have eight characters uh, for each variable. So keep that in mind when you are using your own data set or creating your own data set. And uh, where can you get this process macro developed by Hayes? Go to this website here, processmacro.org. That's the website that you need to go and download and install this macro. If you don't have uh, this, this macro installed on your computer, uh, this plugin on your SPSS, uh, this is a great time to do that. I would pause this presentation, this video, and go to this website, download it, and install on your computer. Follow the instructions that Hayes will give to you um, to install this uh, macro on your computer. OK? You did that already. So now let's run a model. How can we do this? How can we run this model on SPSS? And the model that we'll be testing today is this indirect effect of meaningfulness on job performance via engagement. So the mediator here 
is job engagement, our independent variable is meaningfulness, and our dependent variable is performance. Again, there is this language that we use, so the mechanism through which meaningfulness uh, influences performance could be engagement, and that's our mediator. How do we run this analysis? The first step is to click on Analyze. And you'll see a, a list of potential analysis that you could run. The one that we are interested uh, today for the mediation models is regression. So we needed to click on regression. And then you have another tab here with a, a, a number of options. You can run linear regressions. We, you can uh, run binary logistic models ordinal models, probit models, but for mediation models, uh, we are adopting the process macro developed by Hayes. So click on that particular option. Once you do that, this is the screen that you see. So uh, on your left side here, you have the list of the variables you find in your data set. If you chose to use our own data set, you will have this list of variables. If you are adopting your own data set, you may have a different uh, set of variables there. But again, the magic number is eight, eight characters per variable. If you have more than eight characters in the name of the variable, well, you will get an error message. So our next step then is to uh, select the correct number. With mediation models, we are adopting model number four. And this is critical. If you don't select the right model number, um, you will get error messages or output that is not applicable to your model. So you may be finding different results or results that actually don't test for your hypothesis. Um, Hayes and his colleagues put together a series of models that are more than 70 models, seven zero models. So we also added in the description of this video a link in which you can get access to all these models that are more than 70 models. So yeah, if you want to learn more about the other models, just download that file and you'll have uh, an idea about what other models you can run. But for mediation, again, model number four. Let's bring the variables to the right place. So performance is our outcome variable, or why. Some, uh, some researchers we will use this terminology, y for dependent variable, x for independent variable. Um, in the end, they are the dependent variable or independent variable. Uh, and then we have our meaningfulness as our independent variable and engagement as our mediator. You'll notice that there is a place here to add your covariates or controls. Um, in this analysis, to keep it simple, we do not have controls. But you can. You can have, for example, I don't know, age, or in this case, commitment could be a control. What's important to know about controls is that you have to have a theoretical reason, a theoretical justification for adding controls to your model. What controls do is basically to partial out variance related to, that, to those particular variables. So it's important to have a theoretical justification to add controls to your model. And then what we also see here is this section in which we have the moderators. So we have moderator W, Z, V, and Q. We are not adopting moderators at this point, but you should know that it's extremely important, important for the process macro when you are conducting moderating uh, equations or moderating models to enter the variable in the right moderator. Okay. But we'll talk more about that in one of our future sessions. So if you want to know more about how to use those uh, places here, how to put variables here, yeah, uh, watch the future sessions in this uh, workshop and the next workshops. So the next, uh, the next step is to click on Option and select Total Effects. 
there are many different options here uh, for mediation models. We needed to click on total effect and also the Sobol test. Remember, we, are, we should not report Sobol tests uh, when writing uh, the, about the results or reporting the results. Uh, but for completedness, we will show you the Sobol tests for the mediation models as well. Now, just click on OK. And there you go. We have the output for our analysis. This is the first screen that you should see. And if you scroll down, you uh, get to this point. Always double check the model number. Remember, for mediation is model number four. And then we check for the variables. We have performance, meaningfulness, and engagement. They are the dependent variable, independent variable, and mediator. Our sample, in our data set, we have a thousand observations. That's how we created the data set. So the sample size is 1,000. Everything looks good now. So let's take a look at the output, the coefficients now. So we have two steps. In the first step, remember when we are running the current tests for mediation, the first thing that we needed to do is to see if the independent variable predicts our mediator. What's the relationship between meaningfulness and engagement? We do find that meaningfulness uh, has a significant relationship with engagement. P here is less than 0.05. And then we move to our second step. And uh, in our second step, we are looking for the relationship between our mediator and our dependent variable, job engagement and performance. And in this case, we have also a significant relationship uh, in between engagement and performance. P is less than 0.05. And you'll notice that we are controlling for our independent variable, which becomes non-significant. So that relationship with performance is not significant at this point. If you keep scrolling down your screen uh, or this file, you'll see the effects composition. And here we have that the total effect is significant. So the total effect is the indirect effect plus the direct effect. If we look at the direct effect, the direct effect is not significant. So when we have the mediator in the model, the relationship between our independent variable, meaningfulness, and our dependent variable performance is not significant. The next step is to look at the indirect effect. And here we look at the bootstrapping confidence interval. We see here that zero is not in the 95% confidence interval, which indicates to us that this indirect effect is significant. So now we have evidence for the indirect effect. Yes, meaningfulness influences performance via engagement. Just to keep this complete, to, uh, for the sake of completeness, we uh, also conduct the Sobol test. And you'll notice that the terminology that we have in the output file is not the same. Uh, of the terminology that we clicked when we were asking SPSS to run this model. Instead of giving us a Sobol test coefficient, it gives us a normal theory test for the indirect effects, which is the Sobol test. So in this particular case, our p-value for the Sobol test is less than 0.05, so it is significant as well. But remember, we don't report Sobol tests when writing about the results or reporting the results anymore. Well, in this session, we uh, talked about SPSS, how to get your data uh, in SPSS so now you can run mediation models. When we got to that place, that position, we then uh, ran the mediation model. Thank you. This is the end of this session.